Top five fanboy gripes. Number two. The ending of the first season of The Legend of Korra. So I guess I should warn you up front that this video will contain spoilers for The Legend of Korra if you haven't seen it yet, and also that we're entering some dangerous weeb territory here. If you are not of the weeaboo persuasion, you may just want to back away now. Anyway, The Legend of Korra. It's pretty much the greatest action-adventure cartoon that's ever been made. Even better than its predecessor, The Last Airbender. And see, this means a lot to me. When I was a kid, I... I... I was kind of weird. I was a very serious little kid and I was very picky about the things I watched. I pretty much ignored anything that had Muppets or Puppets or Fraggles or Pee Wee's Playhouse, anything like that. To me, that stuff was for babies. And I also missed out on a lot of live action stuff because my family rarely went to go see movies. Anything live action was for adults. Basically, I was obsessed with cartoons, things that were drawn, because hey, I'm an artist, I draw today. But not just any cartoons. I didn't like Bugs Bunny, the Looney Tunes, stuff like that. I was singularly fixated on sci-fi fantasy action adventure cartoons that had a sense of continuity. You know, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Voltron, Pirates of Dark Water, and any cool Japanese shit that got translated and shown on Channel 30 at 5.30 in the morning on Sundays. Like Dragon Warrior. Oh, Dragon Warrior. So as the adult version of the kid that I was, The Legend of Korra is like the holy grail when it comes to badass, epic, martial arts, super magical fantasy shit. I don't know if anything is ever going to top it in that genre. But of course, like everything else, it's not perfect. The tragic flaw in The Legend of Korra is the last half of the last episode of the first season. And the other fans of the show, they always say, well, you gotta cut them a break. The creators didn't know if they were gonna get a second season at all because Nickelodeon was dicking around with them. So they had to kind of wrap it all up as quickly as possible, just in case this was the end of the show. Even under those circumstances, I consider the ending to be unforgivably lame. So in this final episode, there were two main things going on. Korra had to unmask and defeat Amon, the villain, who was completing his terrifying rise from being a back-alley rabble-rouser to being this horrific tyrant who was set to destroy everything good and beautiful in the world. Breathtaking stuff up to that point, just breathtaking. Also, she had to learn airbending, because at the beginning of the series, she can waterbend, firebend, and earthbend, but she can't master airbending because airbending requires tranquility and the peace of mind she doesn't have. So let's start with Amon. Let's start with his unmasking, which was really cool. See, the setup was this. The whole time, Amon had been telling his followers that he had to wear a mask because his face had been cruelly burned by firebenders as a child. But then Korra and her friends find out who he really is, and they confront him in public at a giant rally, and they say, you're a fraud, Amon. Your face ain't really burned. Take that mask off. You're a faker. So Amon does take his mask off. After 12 episodes of buildup, we finally get to see his face. And his face is in fact burned. It has a, it has a big scar across his face and it's all fucked up like his lip is curled and no eyebrows. But his cover story is still a ruse. This leads us to believe that Amon is so hardcore and so dedicated to his political cause that he burned his face himself to give him that street cred. He was literally willing to do that, just splash fire across his face and fuck up his face forever so that he could go on his little uh, journey of retribution. That's amazing. That is a true villain move. Then at the end of the episode, he falls in some water and it washes off and you learn it was like face paint. Like he woke up every day and put some henna on his face. This is worse than what happened to Bane. This is the biggest nerf ball moment in pop culture history. I hate it. Suddenly, the greatest action cartoon in history is reduced to being an episode of Scooby-Doo. He jumps out of the water and his eyebrow is magically back and his lip is no longer curled. Wait, so that wasn't even just face paint? It was like a full-on facial prosthetic? What the fuck? And then some random people see him without his mask and they see his face and they're like, Hey, he was faking. He's a big phony. That's right. You're a big fat phony. And then he flies away. Oh, I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those meddling kids. That is such a letdown. So what about the heroine? What about Cora and her finally learning airbending? They also completely ruined that. Amon takes her powers away. He succeeds. He touches her forehead, takes away all her ability to bend stuff. So she's left helpless. But then she learns how to airbend. She finally gets some tranquil peace of mind and she learns how to do it finally. 
and then she's able to defeat him. But it's really unsatisfying because when she airbends, it's just like how she used to firebend. She just blasts like a bazooka, just wah, boosh, 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 boosh. There's no tranquility there. It's the same as if she got a gun knocked out of her hand and then she just kind of found another gun. There's no real change in her character. There's no real lesson learned. She's just like, hey, I got a new trick. I found another gun. Boom, boom, now you're dead. And then in the final wrap up, everything begins to suck even more. Now she's despondent because instead of having three powers, she only has one. So she's really depressed and she wants to kill herself maybe. But then the spirit of Aang comes back and says, don't worry, I'll heal you. Everything is good now. Happy ending. Oh. First off, most obviously, have Amon's face really be scarred. At the end, when he's talking to his brother, have some recognition that he did it to himself because he's just that fucking badass. And more importantly, when Korra learns how to airbend, it should signify some sort of mental and spiritual change. She should come to terms with the fact that her powers may be gone forever, but that she's going to continue to fight despite that. That even without her greatest weapons, she's not helpless. They should have set up a scenario where she stands up to Amon and kind of rallies the crowd around her, exposes him for who he is. And when he tries to attack her, instead of blasting at him like a bazooka, she should have gracefully evaded him and used currents of wind to fling him around. No matter how much he tried to attack her, she was, she was safe within this vortex of tranquility created by her airbending. You know, defensive martial arts like Tai Chi using Amon's violent energy against him. He would get more and more desperate, and she would be more and more serene. She would finally be like the leaf, using the gentle currents of wind to dissipate the violence and anger. That seems so obvious. Why didn't they do that? So the good guys win. Amon blows himself up with his brother in the speedboat, which was a pretty badass moment. No need to change that. And Korra should have ended the first season only having airbending and not her three other powers. She would be facing an unknown future, where everything she had counted on was gone. She would have lost the cool toys that she's always enjoyed, but she's gained friends and wisdom, and that makes up for it. Needless to say, Lin and all the other characters that lost their powers, they should have ended in the same boat. It did kind of devalue Lin's heroic sacrifice when they suddenly declared backseas and gave her everything that she had lost back. You don't have to wrap everything up in a neat little bow like this. And see... That would have made a great transition to the beginning of the second season. If there was no second season, then you would have had a good bittersweet ending. But since they did get a second season, when uh, her uncle Unalak comes down from the north to teach her about spirits or whatever, instead of that, you could have said that he was coming down there to restore her bending, to teach her how to unlock her spirit to restore her lost powers. That would have made him a sympathetic character at first, and she would have had a lot more reasons to trust him, which would have made it ultimately more distressing when he turned out to be the ultimate villain. The two seasons would have had this perfect bridge between them. <sighs> maybe if Nickelodeon hadn't fucked around with the creators and just let them know they were going to have two seasons, maybe that could have happened. And if it had, then The Legend of Korra would be, in my opinion, virtually perfect. But hey, it's all good. Season 2 was great. Season 3 was transcendently fucking awesome. One of the coolest things ever. And Season 4 was also really great. So all in all, we're left with The Legend of Korra, a near-perfect show. I guess we'll have to be satisfied with that. So that's my second biggest fanboy gripe in history. Stay tuned for number one, the big one. You probably already know what it's going to be. Thank you.